The recent Ebola crisis in Africa is a lesson from which we all must learn. Health issues like this have made Europe evaluate its capacity to react should such outbreaks occur, to estimate its exposure to this risk and its capacity to respond, and to systematically address health threats of this nature. Outbreaks of disease, even 10 years ago, have already shown us that preparation is key to an appropriate response. They prompted member states to work together to be better prepared and to coordinate and harmonize their approach to outbreaks of this kind to ensure a rapid and targeted reaction. However, being prepared within the European Union is not enough. Severe outbreaks occur outside the EU and external action is required to mitigate the exposure to these risks, while also providing the necessary protection to the people most directly affected. To address these issues, the European Commission has developed a strategy based on three rings of action, linked to a larger network called the CBRN, Centre of Excellence Risk Mitigation Network. First ring of action. The three rings of action are geographically defined. The first is based on actions in countries neighbouring the European Union, specifically the Mediterranean Basin, the Balkans and the Black Sea region. Given their proximity to the EU, actions taken under the first ring are the highest priority. As a result, this is the region that has seen the largest and most widespread support. The European Commission's strategy here has been based on several approaches. First of all, a network of modernised laboratories has been set up to help countries become better prepared. These are staffed by specialists in the field of disease transmission. There has also been a focus on capacity building, with investment in providing specialists with the tools they need to deal with emerging viruses and manage outbreaks when they occur. Countries in the region have also been assisted in implementing the World Health Organization's international health regulations, ensuring compliance with international standards, which means that their actions are standardised and internationally recognised. This work has also seen appropriate measures implemented at ports, airports and land border crossings to control the natural or intentional spread of diseases in the region. Geographically more distant and covering a wider area, from Africa to Central Asia, the region of the second ring of action is one from which major diseases emerge. Consequently, a different strategy has been required here, as the same level of investment has not been possible. Here too, there's been a focus on capacity building. In Central Asia, laboratories have been established and equipped while in Africa, one of the main tools in the fight to prevent and manage the spread of diseases has been the EU Mobile Laboratory Project. The effectiveness of these mobile laboratories has been clearly demonstrated in the case of Nigeria, where a mobile laboratory was already on the ground when Ebola broke out, as a result of which efforts to control the disease were much more effective than in neighbouring countries. It is not enough, however, to make preparations to protect only human health. Animals are potential viral reservoirs and can pass viruses on to humans, or they themselves can get ill and die with devastating economic consequences. It's also important to look at the environment and examine all the factors for the transmission of viral pathogens. Climate change has seen disease-bearing ticks that were previously contained below a certain latitude migrate further north, carrying, for example, the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever virus with them. The One Health concept has identified the areas in which capacity needs to be mobilised in order to be properly prepared. This concept covers health, ecology, veterinary medicine, human medicine and other areas required to ensure a comprehensive approach. Third Ring of Action The third ring of action is aimed at countries more distant from the European Union. However, increased distance does not mean reduced risk. The H1N1 swine flu virus, for example, originated in Mexico before coming to Europe. SARS started in China and was carried to Europe by infected humans. And the H5N1 bird flu virus 
has been carried to Europe by migrating birds, with devastating consequences for the poultry industry. The main focus of the third ring of action is to get actors in the region to cooperate and communicate with each other, to formulate a common strategy and to build capacity. For example, in Southeast Asia, the European Commission is assisting this process through training, coordinated through its Center of Excellence, based in Manila. The majority of these actions carried out in the three rings are based on the network of the Centers of Excellence. There are four centers in the EU neighborhood, three in the second ring of action, and one based in Manila in the third ring. These centers provide countries with a forum in which to discuss and coordinate activities. Once national priorities have been identified, these are then discussed at a regional level in the Center of Excellence Secretariats, where projects are defined in order to receive funding from the EU. This work is conducted with the support of the United Nations and the European Commission's in-house science service, called JRC. All of this work is funded and carried out by the European Union. A specific programme exists, the instrument contributing to stability and peace, that not only deals with the fight against severe diseases, but also with the fight against organised crime, terrorism, with protection of critical infrastructures and security issues linked to climate change. In fighting diseases, the key issue is time. To prevent an epidemic, you have to be prepared well in advance. Resources must be available and coordinated, both inside and outside the EU, to ensure their most efficient use. This requires the application of international standards to ensure that everybody acts in the same way. It also demands exporting best practice from Europe to the regions in question. These efforts not only strengthen health security in these regions, they act as a first line of defense for European citizens against health threats and bio-risks.